Good afternoon, Coach Slack here. Uh, once again, continuing our readings on the ascetical homilies of St. Isaac the Syrian. Uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned in the last video, when you get into this range of homilies, you know, they're page, page and a half for several in a row. <clears throat> Uh, whereas the previous ones were several pages each. So I'm just going to read this whole homily 11. It's page 196 and about half of page 197. Homily 11. <clears throat> on how the beauty of monastic life is preserved and on how it can be a means for God to be glorified. The monk ought to be in his appearance and all his actions are exemplar of profit to those who see him so that by reason of his many virtues which shine forth like sunbeams the enemies of truth when they look upon him will involuntarily confess that the hope of salvations salvation which the christians have is firm and unshakable and from every side will run to him as a refuge and so the horn of the church will be exalted over her enemies and many will be moved to emulation of its of his virtue and will come forth from the world, and he will be venerable among all because of the beauty of his life, so that on his account the mouth of the sons of the church will be opened, and their head will be exalted above all religions. For the boast of the church of Christ is the monastic way of life. In every aspect, therefore, the beauties of a monk's life should shine forth, namely, in elevation above the visible world, scrupulous non-possessiveness, perfect contempt of the flesh, sublime fasting, constancy in silence, orderly discipline of the senses, careful watch over the sight, the cutting off of all contention with any man over anything pertaining to this age, brevity in speech, purity from the remembrance of wrongs, simplicity with discernment, sincerity and ingenuousness of the heart coupled with sound judgment, alertness and acumen, and further, the following is proper to him, to know that the present life is unavailing and fleeting, and that the true and spiritual life is near at hand, not to be known or observed by men, not to fetter himself with companionship and union with any man, to have a quiet dwelling place, a cramped abode, paltry and mean possessions, to flee men always like a wild ass, and unflaggingly to persevere in prayers and readings, not to love honor, nor to rejoice in guests, not to bind himself with this life, courageously to endure temptations, to divorce himself from worldly rumors and from inquiries, inquiries into worldly affairs, continually to take thought for and to keep in mind his true country, to have a sad and furrowed countenance, to weep without pause day and night, and more than all these in things both small and great, to keep guard over his chastity and to cleanse himself from gluttony. For these are a monk's manifest beauty stated in brief, and they bear witness to his dying utterly to the world and his nearness to God. We ought at all times, therefore, to give thought to these virtues and acquire them for ourselves. But if someone should ask what need I have to state these things separately and not speak about them generally and in brief, I answer that it is done of necessity, in order that when a man who takes care for his life looks for one of the aforesaid things in his soul to find whether he is lacking in one of them, he may learn his deficiency in each virtue from these distinctions, and this list will serve as a reminder to him. And should he acquire in himself all the virtues stated, the knowledge of others also, which I have not mentioned, will be granted to him, and he will be, for men and the holy angels, a cause for ascribing glory to God. Thus from here, before he departs from this life, he will, prepare, he will prepare for his soul a place of repose. To our God be glory unto the ages. Amen. And uh, as I've been doing, I'm going to start sharing these illustrations, right? So there's an illustration at the end of this homily. Uh, it must be a monk, you know, someone living alone in a cave. He has his icon, his little candeli, and he's on his knees on the hard ground uh, praying. <clears throat> So as always in these illustrations, a lot is said with a simple illustration. A lot can be said, and that's sort of a metaphor for how St. Isaac speaks. You know, the ancient wisdom uh, that God has preserved from all time, uh, as bestowed through St. Isaac, is like these illustrations. When you listen to these words, a sentence, a paragraph, a page, can mean so much. 
Now, obviously, he's mainly addressing monastics, and so um, one of the things that I really have grown to be fond of is traveling the world and finding monastic monasteries and monastic communities uh, to spend time. Because one thing I've been thinking about that the most disciplined people I've ever met. Um, or the Greek Orthodox monastics. I've never met more disciplined people in my life. I mean, wrestlers, I've met some elite wrestlers that are disciplined, and I'm sure there's people of all backgrounds and makes um, and cultures that are very disciplined, but the, the very good Orthodox monastics are the most disciplined people. I've been thinking about this for a while now. Um, and so this is kind of, but the, one of the monastics one time told me, he said, there's really two paths to life. There's either the monastic life, so the unmarried life, or the married life, meaning that we stayed in the world and we have spouses and we're raising our family uh, and these types of actions, right? So two paths in life, either the monastic or not, married life or unmarried life. So let's get into this. The monk ought to be, in his appearance and all his actions, an exemplar of profit to those who see him, so that by reason of his many virtues which shine forth like sunbeams, the enemies of truth, when they look upon him, will involuntarily confess that the hope of salvation which the Christians have is firm and unshakable, and from every side will run to him as a refuge. So again, uh, and as I said before to you know St. John Climacus, St. Isaac, you know, a lot of these uh, were directed first and foremost to other monastics, but uh, when looked upon by, by lay people, they can be of our benefit, great benefit also, right? Um, so the monk or any person really should always um, strive to be an appearance exemplar or prophet to those who see him. So especially the higher calling of, say, an, uh, a monk, a monk priest, an archimandrites, uh, these types of things. Uh, so that the virtues, you know, it's not our words, it's our actions um, that inspire people, right? And that if, and just imagine if we had attained such a state that <clears throat> our actions alone were involuntary, <clears throat> uh, involuntarily, as he says here, having the unbelievers confess the hope and the uh, salvation of the Christian, of Christ. And we'll be drawn to these lights these holy people these saints right that's why if you follow my other readings i read uh Sinax in the lives of the saints every day because those are the people who lived up to what we're always striving towards right so they're a good example to us from all backgrounds right And so the horn of the church will be exalted over her enemies, and many will be moved to emulation of his virtue, and will come forth from the world, and he will be venerable among all because of the beauty of his life, so that on his account the mouth and of the sons of the church will be opened, and their head will be exalted above all religions. So again, uh, when someone is living the virtuous life and is attained uh, uh, you know, a holier state, they are purveying the word right the logos they are being the mouth the example uh, of cr being Christ-like is really what it is and when uh, the Orthodox people can show that the, the path to this type of uh, state of being is available um, it should be an inspiration to all the others for the boast of the Church of Christ is the monastic way of life. And again, that's what I was just kind of saying about... Um, so for us lay people, this is kind of a rule of thumb that I use. Like, we should always have a parish that we're going to and attending regularly, whether it's the closest one or, or we go to it for whatever other reason, right? Um, so that's where we're participating in the mysteries of the Church. You know, um, communion, unction, Holy Week, uh, these types of things, the Sunday liturgies and any other... Uh, weekday or weeknight services or feast days that we can attend or sometimes special services um, you know that's our parish and then the monasteries in orthodoxy are kind of like uh, and actually a friend of mine and I one time talked about this and he said he likes to think of the parishes as kind of like the front line the emergency room um, 
level of orthodoxy, whereas the monasteries or where you really go into like a heart specialist or a brain specialist or sometimes something like that, just to use an analogy, of course, but um, but the monasteries aren't like our home everyday parish in most cases. I mean, in some instances, this does occur, but we really should have a parish, uh, the parish priest, a relationship with them in our community, right? And then have some relationships with monasteries and visit other churches and monasteries uh, when uh, available to do so. Uh, but the monasteries in particular, like I said, are for kind of that like, you know, as you know, if it, so these monastics, especially the ones who are doing it for the right reasons and who are called to do it and are fulfilling that calling. They are, as St. Isaac said, our example, exemplar of the Christian way of life, the way to theosis. In every aspect, therefore, the beauties of a monk's life should shine forth, namely, in elevation above the visible world, says what we're saying, the unseen world, scrupulous non-possessiveness, and these are the qualities he's going to list, perfect contempt of the flesh, sublime fasting, so that always just makes me think when Christ said, you know, they asked him, why couldn't we uh, remove this, you know, pray for this? He said, because this one takes great prayer and fasting. That's scripture, Christ's own words. So sublime fasting is one thing. And when I was talking about discipline with the monastics that I've observed, constancy and silence, orderly discipline of the senses, as that discipline, not only of like their actions, but before that, their senses, right? Careful watch over the sight cutting off of all contention with any man over anything pertaining to this age. So anything that we're upset about that's temporary, right? Temporary. Anything that's creation uh, of the world, right? So money, uh, things, right? If we're uh, holding contention over these things um, pertaining to this age, that's a little bit less than uh, the total virtuous way of life, right? Brevity and speech, Purity from the remembrance of wrong. Simplicity with discernment. That's the one I always just oh, wish. Yeah, like simplicity and with discernment. That's so strong. Uh, you know, simple, kind, simple approach, but with great discernment, knowing which way to go each moment. Sincerity and ingenuous of the heart coupled with sound judgment. So sound judgment, that simplicity with discernment. Alertness, alert to our, you know, we're observing what's going on, both in the seen and unseen world and acumen, so like integrity, uh, fortitude, right, these types of things. And further, the following is proper to him, to know that the present life is unavailing and fleeting. It's a point, you know, about the contention with any man over pertaining to anything to this age. It's unavailing and fleeting. And that the true and spiritual life is near at hand. And that's what my elder on the holy mountain that I visit the most uh, often gives me examples of eternity compared to this temporary world. He always uh, makes that impression to me. That's an important thing. Uh, you know, this this one time he said, you know, that uh, when I blinked, that's this life, this temporary life compared to eternity is not even the flicker of the eyelash during the blink comparatively, right? That was one example. He's given me some, several through the years. Um, to have a quiet dwelling place, a cramped abode, paltry. So now he's getting into the more austere, <clears throat> ascetical type of life, right? And so this is where sometimes they do get so much closer to God and have opportunity. Not that any of us cannot do that. Uh, and I don't mean even just being monastic. Sometimes our struggle and our CCs as parents and uh, spouses is that relationship. You know, that's our CCs. The monks, they're married to Christ. They're living, you know as he's uh, describing here those of us who are living in the world our lay people who chose the married life a lot of times we say oh well, there's no way we could do these things they cramped the boat paltry and mean possessions is that really how shows our virtue not necessarily sometimes our virtue is shown greater through our relationship with our spouse and our children than necessarily saying hey let's all go live in a cave or something but there are ascetics who attain uh a great state of theosis that I've observed who do live like this. To flee men always like a wild ass, unflaggingly to persevere in prayers and readings. <clears throat> and why do they do this most of the time? That connection to God. You know, they're praying, reading, fasting endlessly. Uh, whereas we in the world, we have to follow um, the church calendar a little bit closer, right? Just for the health of our family and ourselves, right? Uh, their uh, health is a, a different... Uh, you know, they subdue the body um, 
more than most people in the history. Not to love honor, nor to rejoice in guests, not to bind himself with this life, courageously to endure temptations, that's for all of us. We must all courageously endure temptations. To divorce himself from worldly rumors and from inquiries into worldly affairs. So, you know, getting caught up in all them prophecies, you know, especially now with uh, social media, that's a big hit here. You see the people like I'm making some YouTube videos. You know, I get like 18, 20 of you to watch these videos, uh, you know, like day or two. Um, but you see on social media all the time, YouTube and stuff it's like all oh, the prophecies, World War Three, the end of the world, all these types of things. You constantly are seeing that, right? So. Here's St. Isaac saying, divorce yourself from worldly rumors. So that's the types of things. We're not getting caught up in the worldly rumors. It's not enough time, right, uh, to focus on. It's, it's distracting us, right? And from inquiries into worldly affairs, so the news, right? right? We do our um, citizenship. We do our duties, our responsibilities. But we're not uh, preoccupying ourselves with the worldly rumors and conspiracy theories and uh, the news, right? Continually to take thought for and to keep in mind his true country. To have a sad and furrowed countenance, so again, the more ascetical approach. To weep without pause day and night, that's an amazing gift. When I see the, the fathers that just weep the whole time during the liturgy or praying or something, that always amazes me. I, I, I wish I had that uh, a little bit more. And more than all these, in things both small and great, to keep guard over his chastity, so our virginity. Today, uh, September 26th, was St. John the Theologian, uh, who was able to be called the Virgin, right? <clears throat> He guarded his chastity. And to cleanse himself from gluttony. For these are amongst manifest beauty, stated and brief. And so were all these struggles and these austerities. It's actually beautiful. And they bear witness to his dying utterly to the world. So in the world, but not of the world. And his nearness to God and the result. We ought at all times, therefore, to give thought to these virtues and acquire them for ourselves. So this is all people, right? But if someone should ask what need I have to state these things separately and not to speak about them generally. And in brief, I answer that it is done of necessity in order that when a man who takes care for his life looks for one of the aforesaid things in his soul to find whether he is lacking in one of them, he may learn his deficiency in each virtue from these distinctions. And this list will serve as a reminder to him. So, you know, he's given us the wisdom of God. He's spelling it out. He's telling us the exact states and actions that we need to be doing and that's what he's pointing out here <clears throat> and again it comes back to what we always say self-examination know thyself and being honest with ourselves right if we're going to work on our deficiencies and our weaknesses we got to know what they are we got to address them we can't hide from them we can't pretend they don't exist and should he acquire in himself all the virtues stated then knowledge of others also which i have not mentioned will be granted to him so the domino effect of either vice or virtue uh you know what we always say the root of humility love these types of things domino effect into all the other virtues and he will be for men and the holy angels a cause for ascribing to glory so what a beautiful thing right uh, if we are the cause of people converting, if we are the inspiration, I mean, God is the cause, but God working through us, if we can shine that light and inspire others uh, to get on the right path, right? That's, there's not much better than that. Thus from here, before he departs from this life, he will prepare for his soul a place of repose. So a multitude of sins are covered, they say, by helping others and saving others. To our glory be, to our God be glory unto the ages. Amen. Homily 11. Ancient wisdom of God. It's just the truth. It's just reality given to us uh, by Saint Abba Isaac. <clears throat>